Hello subscribers and watchers, what's up? This is Vivs from Slidenerd here. In this video, I'm going to talk about method overriding in Java. Now I've already talked about something called method overloading in my playlist which is object oriented Java tutorials on my channel Slidenerd. If you haven't seen that video, please go back and check it out. And again, if you haven't seen inheritance videos, please go back and check that out as well because this depends on those two topics. So first, let's talk about method overriding. It says a subclass method overrides a superclass method blah 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 if it has same name parameters list. Now what does this mean? Let's try to understand exactly what these two statements over here mean with the help of a simple example. What I have is a class called cycle which is a general class over here. There's a plain by cycle which is a type of cycle and there's a geared by cycle which is another type of cycle that you can have. So now let's take a look at the properties that you can think about when it comes to a cycle. You can say that the cycle has some weight which can be given as something. Of course there are many attributes other than that. You can say the cycle has some color, it has a kind of handle, kind of a seat. But for now let's just stick to one attribute which is weight here. And let's say it has a method called get info. Same way when you talk about the plain by cycle it has properties like weight. You can add another property called brand representing which brand it belongs to. And then there's of course the get info method again. And talk about the geared by cycle again similar properties exist. Let's take a look at a simple code example to see what is method overriding. So I say that this is my class cycle. It has weight. I'm gonna say int weight equals to 10. Forget about the constructors, forget about everything else. So there's a method public void print info. Inside this method, I simply print it out by saying system.out.println wait. Now let's talk about the other class, bicycle. Now here, notice carefully, I've said bicycle extends cycle, which means it is a subclass of cycle. In other words, a bicycle is a specialized version of cycle. So in this, I have a different attribute, which is string brand equals to hero for now. And then there's again the print info method. Now notice this carefully. I've highlighted this in red color so that you guys will notice. It is the same name as this method in the super class. What about the parameter list? Even they are the same. It's literally like taking this method from the cycle and pasting it here inside your bicycle class. However, this says system.out.println brand. So inside the super class cycle, I'm trying to print the weight. Inside the subclass by cycle for the same method, the same name, same parameter list, I'm printing the brand. So when I say by cycle C equals to new by cycle, in other words, create an object of your by cycle, and I say C dot print info, what do you think will happen? Let me show you the output. The output is gonna be hero. And the, in other words, it's gonna print this brand over here. Why not this? Let's try to understand. So I say, that this is my object C which is over here that belongs to by cycle. This has variables and methods. The variables are brand equals to hero which is right here and the method is print info which is right here. Now this C over here is an object of by cycle which inherits or extends from cycle. So there is a copy of the super class variables and super class methods as well which means Inside my bicycle class, I also have int weight equals to 10, which is derived from the super class. That's why I put it inside this blue colored box that you see here. And there's also the print info method that again has a same copy from the super class. So notice this, this white colored box print info belongs to my current class, which is bicycle. The blue colored box print info belongs to my super class cycle. So I'm using the current object C which is nothing but the object of my subclass. So when I say C dot print info it's gonna call that method which belongs to my current class and not the super class. So this is what method overriding means. It means that given that there are two methods one in the super class one in the subclass and if you try to call the method from the subclass object it's gonna call the subclass version of print info and it's gonna print hero and not the super class stuff that you see above.
So there are certain things regarding method overriding that we need to discuss. First of them is this. If the method inside the superclass, let's say cycle, was public, and if you try to make it private inside your bicycle class, then that is not proper. It's an error because you're trying to interfere with polymorphism. Now remember, I've not talked about polymorphism so far. So for now, just bear with me and remember this point. But when we get to polymorphism, you'll know exactly what is going on with this stuff. So the compiler will give you an error if you override a public method and make it private. In other words, what this means is, it's public here inside my cycle, which is base class. In my bicycle, it has to be public. It cannot be private. However, if in my cycle class, if it was private, in my bicycle, I could make it default or public. In other words, I can always go higher from private to public, but I cannot go lower from public to private. That's a simple way you remember that. So let's also talk about something, overloading versus overriding, which is a major source of confusion for beginners out there. So overloading, look at the name. It means to overload something. It means to make something work more. That means you have a method, you put more and more parameters inside, you change the parameters and you create different versions of that method. That's why it's called overloading or placing an additional load. Overloading is that two methods that can have the same name provided they have different method parameters. And of course, they exist in the same class. Well, at least usually, you're supposed to make them inside the same class. But when you talk about overriding, then overriding is where there are two different methods. They are same, 100% same, and they exist in the subclass and the superclass. So when you call that method using the subclass object, you're calling the subclass version of that method. So in other words, the Java compiler is like, well, they're completely unrelated when you talk about method overloading. You talk about overriding, like I said, you have same parameters, everything is same. Now remember, there's always an accidental error that people do when they are beginners. Let's say that there is a super class and there is a subclass. What you do is you give them slightly different names inside the super class and the subclass. You actually wanted to perform overriding where everything is 100% same, but instead you change the method name inside the subclass causing accidental overloading. Now again, if this is a little tricky to understand, don't worry. We'll go to NetBeans and I'll show you what this accidental overloading looks like. So that will be all as far as method overloading and overriding is concerned. In the next video, I'm gonna go to NetBeans and show you exactly how these things work. In the meantime, if you like what you saw, please like this video Share this video, subscribe to our channel and let us know your thoughts in the comment boxes below. Thanks for watching, we'll catch you guys in the next video, have a nice day.